So we got some people here. Okay. So we're talking about what is the fire doing to them? Yes. What, what fire are we talking about, Jen? Well, we, well, this kind of started from some after party conversation on, um, we, you know, just a, a lot of the people in this tribe are doing some really big things mm -hmm. and it's not just, they just decided when they, I mean, they were going to do big things. That's kind of been part of their, their career and things that they've done in rooms they've walked into that it is recognized that a lot of our tribe members, like sometimes they are the big bright light. And we've realized if we are those people, I am one and Jesse's one, that sometimes that, uh, that those people are putting sunglasses on. Those people are kind of like, that. y'all, you're too much. You built different. I'm not sure I can, uh, I, I'm not ready for this. So you're a lot. All those comments that we've maybe uh, engaged with. And like, what does that mean? Does that mean that we need to dim ourselves or does that mean we just got to be who we are and that might not be the place we're supposed to be like there's a lot of conversations around that and i think that's what led to hey, well, let's, let's dig in and talk about this yeah yeah i remember it was carol on the after party last time um that that idea came from we're having this conversation about her experience and how things are now and and it's like yeah like that is that that's a real thing that we all deal with I, you know in my head I can remember my trajectory, rather my maturity <laughs> or lack of maturity, right? Early on, the way I the way I presented myself or the way I um, presented my ideas, my opinion, whatever it was. And I be, my behavior elicited a rejection. Right. And so I think there's that's something that we need to take ownership of. And then after I kind of softened that up and got more tactful about it, there was still a tone of rejection, but it was, it was not, it was different. It had a different flavor to it. And, and I think <clears throat> just being a human being, it, it makes, it kind of creates this lonely state. Uh, and, and so like, I think it's a fact, a truth that we don't examine very often and, uh, and, blame ourselves or see it as a deficiency that we have when I think it's more of a natural occurrence. And so that's kind of what I want to examine and, and dig through with, with, with the tribe. Yes. This um, and, and, I, and I can, and I, I want, I just want to add to it that what I've experienced and I'm not saying it's good. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just what I've experienced. And we've got some people in the, in the thread that I already know have gotten to see some of this transformation and some of this that I am, that I do, but it, people label it for me as energy. Mm -hmm. You just got a lot of energy. You just bring a lot of energy. You just bring like, the, cause they don't know what it is. And I'm not saying that they, sometimes that's a lot of energy. I can't handle it. Or, you know, you bring the energy into the room, but I've, I've heard that over and over again is that that's how they label it. Mm -hmm. Yet we know there's a whole lot more that goes into it than just how I show up. But energy seems to be another default for how people try to, I'm not saying diminish it, but like, it's just that it's that they, they want to label it. And that's, that's how I, I've experienced it. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to go, there's some folks saying good morning, and then we're going to dive into it. So, okay, do it. Mr. Denver Waters. Good morning. Hi, friend. Good morning. Uh, then, you know, this person, did I do. Laura's gotten to see a lot of it. Hopefully she doesn't divulge too much. She's gotten to see a lot of, a lot of the things we're talking about today. And she is again, one of my uh, dear friends and biggest supporters. Yes. <laughs> the crazy. What is up, Miss Laura? And then we got the troublemaker. <laughs> Bruce, we're going to get after you, bro. We're going to get Uh-huh. Um, Adam Hoot says, uh, one of the 48 laws of power is to never outshine the master. Um, right. And, you know, that always makes me question, like, what qualifies you as the master? <laughs> and if you are saying you are the master, that is the first problem. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. And then Kyle Davis. I love it that Kyle's on my side, Jen. <laughs> Kyle says, Jesse's touching on something that I haven't heard discussed in a long time. EQ. You know what I like about the EQ thing? I know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> and Pete says, good morning, everybody. All right. 
So, so Jen, you started talking about energy. And I think when you and I first connected, when we were like exploring the idea of the lean and love conversation or high vision relationships conversation, I think we connected, like we, you and I found common ground on the experience of people telling us you're too much. Yes. So can you like, you know, give us an overview over the past couple of years of what that your relationship with that experience has been in um, terms of people saying you're too much and how you process that then and now. Yes. So, well, I, and we've talked about this a little bit, but um, and I talked about this with Laura in one of her events this week, but anyway, the, where I, where I have been for most of my career, I'd say up until two or three, two years ago, two, two or three years ago was um, that imposter syndrome of like, I had to overcompensate because I didn't come in with a construction degree. I didn't come in with all the building knowledge. I didn't come in with all of the things that the people I was engaging with had. So I had to compensate for some in some way. And whether I was doing it consciously or not, like the, I was able to control my energy and my engagement with people. And so that's that's how I showed up. And some people like soaked it in. Kyle, one of those people, he's just like, this is my person. But there are other people because of how I showed up. It's like, whoa, you you, you just got to stop. You're just a lot. We, you're talking too fast. Your hands are moving too fast. Like we, we're not following where you are. Let's get back to the tools and processes and blah, 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 blah. Like whatever that is. And I had to learn how to navigate through that early on. And so it's like, okay. I know that's what they expect when I come in. So how do I temper it, but also make sure that I'm in the room and they're listening. And, and that was a lot in my head. And so over the last couple of years, I think I've realized that, oh, um, that I want to be in the room and I want to sit at the table, but I don't want to be invited to the room if you're not going to let me speak. And that means sometimes you don't get invited to certain rooms and you don't get invited to certain tables and I had to be like, I had to get to where I was okay with that. And as soon as I was okay with that and said, that's okay, I just don't need to be in there. Then it just completely changed that I got to show up that way everywhere. Mm. And people look again, I'm not asking you to go back and look at historical data, but like the last two years, how I've shown up everywhere is exactly the same. Yeah. Did that answer yeah. your question? <laughs> Yeah, it, it does. You know, I think it's important because it. I think a, a lot rather, I'll just say the tribe members probably have all experienced that, right, of showing up, bringing themselves as much as themselves as they're comfortable to bring and somebody getting a comment, right, a side comment like, whoa, 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 you need to tone it down or hey, wait a minute. It's not like I haven't had my coffee yet. Like these, <laughs> yes. these like seemingly innocent comments but they they chip away at your confidence right they chip away like oh they make you for me anyways they've made me like oh is something wrong with me that's that's the sentiment i get like oh there's i have a defect because i'm these people are responding in this way and it's never just one it's a lot of people that kind of have that reaction right um and so that you, there's an option, right? There's a choice to internalize it and dim the fire, dim the flame so that we can be invited everywhere or keep going and maybe adjust the, have your finger on the knob, mm -hmm. right? So that yeah. you can turn it up and turn it down appropriately. Um, and I think the adjustment part is is the value piece, right? Like Kyle said, the, the EQ element of it, being aware of what people value and what they can tolerate, while also not dimming yourself so much to where you're conforming and you lose yourself, right? You, you shared, there we go. Adam says, how often do you have to dim your light to fit in? That is a, yeah, that's no, the that's question. And that's, right. the, that's, I share that with you. I was on, I was on LinkedIn and it was a, a video clip of Brene Brown talking with someone. And she says, the difference is belonging and fitting in. And the, she says, and people either want to fit in, so they will diminish or they will adjust who they are to be able to fit in. Belonging means when you show up, people accept you exactly the way you are. And so yes. I'm going to make sure, Adam, that I get Jesse to answer that question for sure. But I don't, 
<laughs> and then we can, I, I would love the tribe to contribute to that question as well. Yeah, I would have answered the question if Jim didn't cut me sorry, off. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. I got <laughs> so I, I, in current state, I don't dim my light to fit in, right? Like I've become, and it's taken a long, long, long time. I'm, and when I say long, I mean decades, right? Three, two, three decades. Um, and so I'll start at the beginning, right? Early on, and you, you, you can read the progression in the book, right? Becoming the promise you're intended to be. Part of what contributed to my substance abuse was me dimming to fit in, right? And because I had to be less of myself. Mm -hmm. With the intent, like I, what I was doing it for is so that I could feel accepted. And so and kind of to use your analogy, I got invited to a lot of tables. But I was only there to fill a seat. Like nobody cared about what I had to say. The, nobody was taking action on what I had to say. My idea, like I was just like, yeah, okay, you can come and sit at the kids table. And so sacrificing or dimming my my flame, dimming my fire, dimming my energy did get me into more doors. But once I got in the door, I was I was I was a hand, right? Like I was a fixture there. I was I wasn't contributing in any degree. So it's like, OK, I sacrificed this for that and I got that. But this is making me feel worse. Right. Like now I'm wasting my time, like all, all this stuff. So that got all jumbled up. And and so, you know, I would soothe my ailments, my pain, my disappointment, everything else uh, through substance abuse. And well, not just substance abuse, like addiction, period. Right. Um, so fast forward to now and I, I'll say maybe the past three, maybe four years, I've gotten way better at recognizing or understanding that. I can't make everybody happy. Like my flavor is not <laughs> for everybody. And the amount of energy it takes me to be um, Baskin Robbins is, is better spent on just being one flavor because then that helps people say <laughs> like, to your point, Jen, that helps people understand like that, that boy, like, We'll invite them to the backyard party, but we're not inviting them <laughs> to, to the dining the party, but you're not coming to the board meeting. <laughs> right, right, right. Because uh, they understand what I'm going to bring. And where can I serve best? Maybe the backyard party is where I serve best, right? And that's okay because there's some people that don't can't appreciate what I bring because of the energy or the style in which I bring it. It doesn't mean it's less valuable. It's just that they need that information or that value from somebody else that has that style and that thing. And so once I started discovering that, it's like, oh, shit, OK, I I can have more impact. So now it's not a question like if we think of it in terms of social media. If I say things in a certain way, like if I conform and dim my light, I will get more impressions. Right. In terms of social media, I'll get a shitload of impressions. In real life, I get invited to more things and, you know, all that crap. But it, what do impressions mean? Nothing, right? Just more people saw it. When I am have my, my flame full blast, I get more engagement. I have more impact, right? Really? More comments, more, yes. right? Like I get to contribute more mm -hmm. when my flame is full blast. My impressions are dramatically lower. But my impact is significantly deeper. And so then it's a question. What are we here? What am I here for? Am I here to have impact or am I here to be known and recognized? Uh, and so getting comfortable with that and like really understanding the difference of it is what's helped me come to terms with. You're going to get all of me all the time. Right. Like historically, my friends. <laughs> it was awesome. I'd go out, you know, family things and whatever with groups of friends. And they would always say like, Jesse, like, you know, they, they'll, they'll kind of give me the, <laughs> the dossier of who we're going to be like, they're not really crazy like you. And then when we'd all get together, they'd be like, Oh, that's the Jesse. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that that's me. <laughs> right? So there was always that, that thing that they would warn other people or put a disclaimer 
um, which is okay, right? Now, again, that eroded my some confidence and made me question myself a little bit. And since I decided to like, okay, this is me with total respect, right? And that's, so that's another thing we'll touch on. But initially I didn't, like it was, I am who I am, whether you take it or if you don't like me at my worst, you won't like me at my, like that kind of bullshit. Like that, that was aggressive and that really helped people say, ooh, this guy's got an issue, right? Um, and so now it's just, this is what you're going to get, right? And I can come play or not. So, yeah, I, I got clapped from the mail. Yes. Look at that. Mike Kyman says, you got to be authentic no matter if you're a spark or full blazing fire. You just got to be yourself. Thank you, Kyman. So here's the thing. If you have a spark and you suppress the spark, does the spark die? What do you think, Jen? I mean, I, I, my mind goes to, a, a you know, you're at a campfire and like, is are the embers still burning? How, how long has it been? You know, is it days? Is it you've kind of, you put the fire out, but most of the time, because we've done some campfires, if you, you know, you dig around a little bit, you still got some orange glowing underneath there a little bit. So I, I'm going to say a lot of times is what puts it out? Because if if it's self inflicted, I have to I have to do this myself to 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 fit in. I, I don't think it goes away. I've been a result of someone who was needed to put it out. It it because it was it was something that they felt that um, you know it was a personal thing, and so they were intent on putting it out. And it took a while for me to kind of get recover from that. It doesn't mean it went away, but I know that the impact of that versus me going, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to step back. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of not be that person. It didn't mean it wasn't still there. And so I, I think it's what puts it out or what dims it has yep. a lot to do with that. Okay. So Bruce says, I believe there are some people in places you want to offend and have not be comfortable with you because you don't belong everywhere. You said that there's this room right. where you're just not, there's just, that's okay. A hundred percent. Demetria says people with positive energy tend to be very present in their lives, radiating their beautiful energy and everything they do. Uh, you intuitively feel safe, happy, relaxed around them. Their vibe is welcoming. You love being around them because knowingly or not, you feed off of those good vibes. So do you ever, you know, you and I, Jen have talked about like, if you keep feeding the cats, the cats keep coming back. What? Yes. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> what, what does that mean, Jennifer Lacey? Feeding cats. Well, again, it goes, it's not just work. It's like your life. That, yeah. and, it's, and, we, and I've seen a lot of posts this week on, um, I think Alicia Reddy, I think, made a comment on one of my posts this week on just like when we become codependent, when we create codependency, when we create people that you know like we're doing things in our mind we may be helping we may be doing something that in our minds we're doing good but we are creating codependency and when mm -hmm. we do that it's like feeding cats and jesse and i talked jesse's got some actual cats that he had to deal with but <laughs> but it's like and, and i've heard this over time so superintendents i've worked with have said you know for your feeding cats you're they're, they're going to get so dependent on coming back to you so it's like when you have a stray cat and they're roaming, roaming around and you're like oh you feel bad for the cat so like let me put some milk out or let me put some food out and the next day you come out and there's three cats and then you're like, oh, I got to put more. And then you, it just keeps going. They're never going to go away. Jesse, do you have some stories on cats? <laughs> and they ain't my cats. They're my freaking neighbor's cats. But they keep feeding the stupid things and they never go away. But it's like that we do that. We do that. And sometimes it is not because I need to feel important. It's because we feel we're doing good. But then yeah. like we're creating the way another analogy is if you are the pizza delivery guy and you continue to just deliver the pizzas. They're going to keep calling for the pizzas, you know, or do you, are you teaching them how to make the pizza? Right. Right. So I want to ask, pose this question to the audience, to the tribe members, have you been dimming your flame? Um, and so folks leave your comments. We're going to read them. We're going to integrate them into this conversation. Um, you know, one thing, <laughs> kind of, I want to go back to like the, the dimming, like if you put it out, right. Mm -hmm. 
I feel like the more we suppress the flame, the harder it is to get it back, right? To get yeah. it back to, to whatever that energy is. Now, that leads to the second question of why do we suppress the flame, right? Why do we, to use Kyle's language, right? There's a difference in tempering your flame to the audience versus quenching it. So why do we quench it? Why do we try to put it out? And what is the impact on you when you're doing that? I think it's a response, right? Like people are saying, whoa, you're too much. Or, hey, you need to tone it down. Or, you know, hey, I, oh, my favorite is like, hey, we want you to speak. Okay, but I just need to warn, like, you you, you know, I, I love your energy. And so it's not necessary. Here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to ruffle some feathers. It's not because my flame is too hot. It's because the light and the heat from my flame reminds them that they've been sitting stagnant. They get uncomfortable with that feeling. Why? Why, Jen? I, well, I think, and, and we've had, this was part of the after party conversation, is that when you're around someone and there you see all this brightness um, and you see the things that they're doing, one, exactly what you just said. It reminds them. It's it's a constant reminder of, let's say, inadequacies, but just their inaction. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it, like you, and and I and I say that like it's a lot. Like you can conform and you can get promoted. I'm just gonna say you can conform and you can have a goal and you can get promoted based on the way career plans are and career paths and stuff like that. And there are people that do that, and then there are us. <laughs> And that doesn't mean that we don't get promoted and then we don't get recognized and all those things. But it's like when people are in that mode, they're checking boxes. They're not looking at what is out there that doesn't exist. What is out there that I can impact and I can lead and it's going to change the way people show up. Like that is not how they show up. And when they're engaged in a room and sometimes there's rooms like we talked about that that is not. The, the the vibe for most of the people in the room. And you know that you feel it really quickly, but there are people that have done that in check boxes and they're in the room and they're doing everything they're supposed to do to be able to get to that next step. And then we show up and then we start engaging and we start doing stuff. And then that gets traction and that gets momentum. What do they do? Yeah. In their mind, they're, they're doing everything they're supposed to do to be able to get to the next step. And um, again, I have very personal relationships with people that are in the chat right now that have got to see and watch and experience this. And it's not a bad, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. There are people that that is where they are. And then there are other people that that is not how they show up. And th there's sometimes, you know, there's some conflict there. There's some, there's some, I don't, that that's too much, or that's not what we're looking for. But then there's also more. And I'm going to tell you, I've experienced it. There's more people that are drawn to it and they want to know more about it and what is it and how do I how do I feel and experience what that person's feeling and that's to me where how this has grown like a forest fire I just that's what I feel yeah what about you well you know so here's my my person my experience and observation about it right like to specifically around the conformity and non-conformity I know that when I conformed and dimmed my light, I advanced and got promotions faster. Period. And so when I stopped conforming, those promotions and all of that stuff slowed down, but my impact and my influence grew dramatically. So then it became a question, what do I want? Do I want the title or do I want to have influence? Do I want to serve people or do I want to have the status, right? Status, yes. I like that. And, and so I decided that I'm going to hack to sacrifice my climbing of the ladder to have the influence and impact that I want to have. Yes. And I think now my life's different, right? I'm single and all the stuff. And I, I, I get, I mean, I used to get this all the time, like, man, you're next up for the national thing and da, 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 and why don't you want that? And it's like, because I can't, like, 
I would have to sacrifice parts of me that bring me fulfillment. Right. And the energy it's going to take for me to conform is going to rob me of joy. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Right. So when so many conversations with people that care about me, right. And they want to see me grow. They want to see me advance. I'm like, I feel you. I understand what you're saying, but I will be distracted from my purpose, chasing that job, chasing that title, meeting the KPIs and the metrics and all that stuff. Not to say that those things don't have value. They have tremendous value, but I will not be able to serve in the way that I am intended to serve if I chase that next little carrot. Uh, and so, and you know, I want to be clear, like well, we're not talking about conformity or nonconformity in the term, in the perspective of defiance. Right. Talking about nonconformity from the perspective of, I don't need to climb the ladder. I'm going to create this world that I see, <laughs> which is contrary to what the typical formula roadmap is that most of us have, um, <clears throat> maybe fallen victim to. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, I'm trying to get my emotions in check right now because, like, everything you're hitting is like when I, we talked about it earlier. But like, I I had to get to a place to where I will not sacrifice me to be able to be in a room, mm -hmm. and that again that that could impact a lot of things. And when I and I and I made I've been intentional on making sure that how I show up, I show up everywhere. And, um, oh, this is this week I got a, was having an email conversation with, uh, you know, one of our safety people, which, you know, we, safety people sometimes can be very, you know, hard and, and very, you know, compliance driven. And I was having a conversation with one of them and his email back to me was, you are the heart of the company. And again, this is, you know, two or three years after I just decided like, I can't, I can't strive into, into conforming and being and sacrificing who I am. That doesn't mean that I'm not doing everything that I'm supposed to do in my role, but I just couldn't sacrifice who I was to do it. And hopefully Laura and Kyle can chime in at some point, but like, I just had to do that. And once I made that shift, the ripples of impact across this company and across, and you and I talked about this outside of the company. Like there's so much bigger right now than just where I work and who I show up with and who I get to impact in my daily life. But those ripples changed when I made, when I became intentional and that is what I was going to do. Okay. You're so, so I'm gonna, I, uh, There's a few comments that I want to recognize. Okay, and then okay. Come back to, um, the difference between like the career pathway and this other thing that we're talking about. Okay. So, okay. That, that, Chris yeah. Moody, Chris <laughs> says, you read this and this is a good one, right? The biggest concern for any organization should be when their most passionate people become. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Right. They ask like, what happened? You used to be so full of energy. Well, maybe you freaking choked the fire out. Right. Oh, and I've experienced that. And I had people that's like, what's going on? Nothing. I'm just doing exactly what I'm supposed to do. And it was impactful. It was, it was, there was very visible. Yes. 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 Bruce is sharing, answering the question, right? Have you quenched, been quenching your flame? He says, unfortunately, most of my life and even today. And it's a response to a series and degrees of personal and societal weakness and frailty. All right. Uh, Deion Sanders has the ultimate quote, right? Adam, I know you know which quote I'm talking <laughs> about, right? I'm sorry if my confidence is agitating your insecurities. <laughs> that's not how he says it, but that's the message, right? Uh, please forgive me if my confidence is triggering your little insecurities. Um, and so, and then we got Miss Denise Millette. She says, we all have innate desire to fit in. Yes, that makes us human. The people you hang with don't believe in different voices building the best chair. Choir. You, choir. Oh, thank you. Good. Yeah. Choir. You get used to just being a all voice. It's all about the people you choose. The people you choose to be with. <laughs> right? Like, amen. Uh, that is that is the number one differentiator that I've been experiencing. Like, I can um, curate 
my tribe. And I am way more intentional than I used to be about who I spend time with, who I share time with, because they are either going to contribute to my energy, my flame, my learning, my growth. And if they're not contributing, they are taking away. And I'm not saying they're doing it on purpose. That's mm -hmm. just the lens that I choose to look at it through. And it helps me continue growing. Now, back to the, um, there's a lot of beautiful comments, man. Keep them coming. Okay, um, yes, yes, yes. Back to the idea of, you know, the corporate ladder, right? The, the career progression mm -hmm. and this other thing that we're talking about. I recognize and appreciate why people will dim their flame to do this thing, the corporate thing, the career progression and milestones and all that, and maybe not this other thing. I'm going to say because it's easier. And what I mean by easier is because it's laid out. Mm -hmm. If you do these things, you meet these metrics, da, 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 you get the promotion, you get the improvement. It's been, What's that? it's been proven. It's proven. It, there is proof. Now, I'll also add that, you know, some companies and bosses are real good at like moving that goalpost just a little bit more. Yeah. Right? Can you get there? Right? Carrot. They got that carrot. Yeah, they just yeah. keep, keep push, pushing it down the road. This other thing, Jen, it is not proven. No. There is no framework. There is no path. Like you, we are drawing rather, I am drawing the map as I go. I'm discovering, right? By taking yes. the next rightest step, the path reveals itself. And so I have to embrace that. Well, I'll just call it um, insecure situation because nothing's secure. I got to figure it out. And so I think that also contributes to conformity because, well, like somebody else has done that. So like, let's just do that versus nobody's done that. And people around me are saying I'm crazy and I have too much energy and I'm focused on the wrong things. And what about this? And you and what can fail. This? What if you fail, Jesse? Oh my God. What happens what if, if you fail? fail? Yes. Yes. So what do you think about all of that, Jed? Well, I mean, again, it's stuff we talk about all the time. And I just, I think it's, we're not saying if you conform and you have a path and you have a plan, then you're wrong. I, and I, I want to be clear, like there are, like you said, there are people and that is what's comfortable for them. And that is, that's, that's their goal. And that's what they've laid out in front of them. I'm just going to say most of the people in the comments over here, they, sometimes when you're in rooms with those people, you are not going to be the one that, maybe is able to share as much or is able to contribute as much in that room if those people already have a plan and already know what to what they want and already know what the next step is. And to me, that's it. When it's already been identified and there's not an opportunity for, okay, yes, this is what's proven. And this is what we, this is the foundation of what we're going to do. And I think that's why I've been able to have some success in my firm and what I do is because it is, yes, we've done this. And yes, it has been proven, Jennifer. And that is the minimum standards of what we're expecting. But we also know that there's probably a lot of things that are we don't know yet. And they've let me play in that playground. And I think that's why I've been able to be where I'm at and have the success I've had is because they haven't diminished it to the point of we already know the plan there are still a lot of people that that is where they are and that is where they work and that's their happy place. And I, there's times where I have to navigate that. And, and I think there's not, I don't probably not one person over there in the comments that hasn't had to walk into a room and go, okay, assess the room. And I mean, you and I talk about this all the time, you assess it. And sometimes we get brought into rooms where they already know there's conflict. They already know there's oh, yeah. going to be, things that people are going to come and bring up that go against a lot of things we speak. That doesn't scare us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Look, Kyle says, Jen's switch to being intentional was like finding another gear for the company. Damn, baller. She became the voice that needed to be heard to help us hit that next level. Truly an honor to watch. Thank you, Kyle. And that's the amazing thing, right? It's like being able to be a witness to the impact that the tribe is having out there in the world at large is, is it's super meaningful. And it like, it fuels me like, okay, well, shit, you're elevating your game. I'm going to get left behind. Right. 
So we got some fire in the comments. Do it, do it, do it. I want to bring it up. Mr. Mike Kaiman says, I think Ian made a comment, says, Ian, calling BS, your authentic self, having a different opinion and being open to provide your differing opinion got you promoted. Your confidence grew when people forced you to lean in and provide your non-conforming opinion. Now, I, I think everybody's experienced this to some kind of degree. Oh, he's calling BS on me. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> So <clears throat> truth right now, here's, here's what it feels like when, when my opinion, my perspective, or I'll say our perspective, our opinion is being challenged or rather not embraced and received. It feels like outright rejection. It feels in the moment. And there's some lingering uh, emotion attached to that experience like something is wrong with me, I'm in trouble, I'm at risk, right? <laughs> and so on the other side of that, I can't experience the other side of that, right? Because everybody else is having that experience. I got my own drama and my own baggage going like, mm -hmm. oh, shit, what did I say? What did I do? Like, what? how's this going to play out? <laughs> oh, did I say too much? Um, now, the the and Mike, you're 100% right. Like, the reps of saying, you know what, I'm going to share, this is my perspective, this is what I see, this is what I think. I learned through repetition, through the reps, that the, the risk of, you know, losing credit and losing favor with whoever was far smaller than the potential the impact could have. And so I continued to do that, right? And then uh, to, to Mike's point, what I also discovered along the way was like, wait a minute, there's so many people in that structure that don't tell the truth. And when I say truth, I mean that don't share the honest, ugly, dirty, nasty, stinky details about a situation. We spend all our damn time polishing the turd, right? Putting glitter on it. Glitter on it, <laughs> yes. And then what happens is that the other levels of the organization think things are great. And so I decided, so you, you're right, Mike, BS. I decided <laughs> to embrace the fact that, oh, nobody is giving the that hard, painful, honest observation. And that is contributing to a negative experience for everybody involved in the deal. And so I doubled down on, well, I'm just going to share the stinky details. Right. And, and you talked about getting invited to like the contentious situations. I've had <laughs> Kyle Weller told me that it was like top three uh, uh, compliments that I've ever received. I was like, hey, you know, you bring me in for some situations and they're, they're kind of contentious. And you, there's other ones like that you don't bring me into. He's like, oh, yeah, I'm only going to bring you into the biggest problems. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm like, oh, why is like because you go there like you'll point it out and you'll ask and you'll say what, what what's the deal this kind of looks like we're not talking like you said something they didn't hear something does this happen all the time and right but I mean, i've heard i say this a lot but i heard it from jordan peterson conflict avoided is conflict multiplied all right and so i'm sharing this with with the tribe so that when you see something that is is not contributing to the goal that the whole team is working towards. When you see behavior uh, that that is detracting from that and undermining the effort, etc., everybody else sees it too. But there's not very many people that are going to point it out. Pointing it out is uncomfortable, and people are going to say, "We well, shouldn't have said that." I can't believe you said that. Oh my God, aren't you worried? Now again, I'm going to add. It's a lie. Was a lot easier for me because I didn't have the debt. I didn't have tuition to pay. I didn't have mortgage to pay. Like that. That was a. That was kind of the the decision tree that I went through. Like, okay, if I say this, what's the likelihood of me being terminated? Pretty high. Okay. And what happens if I get terminated? Well, I know how to plumb, right? I can that. Or I could do my fishnet calendar shoot. Finally, um, I had less at risk in terms of debt and dependence. And so it was easier for me to do that. Now, I'm also going to say nobody said, well, you know what? We're not going to fire Jesse because he doesn't have dependents, right? Like it, there was value in the moment. Their response was 
what the hell? I can't believe you said that. How dare you, right? And so the idea or the thinking that I subscribe to is hear me now, listen to me later. I'm sharing my observation. You get to do whatever, just like the feedback thing, right? You get to do whatever you want with it. If I expect you to be happy and celebrate and give me a freaking hug and a promotion because I just told you how you're poo-pooing all over the bed, I'm delusional. Like you get to be offended. You get to feel disrespected. And you get to listen to the facts later, process that, and then ideally adjust your behavior. What do you think, Jen? Well, yes, and it made it, it. What you just said made me think about something that my daddy taught us when we were growing up, and he said, and he taught, he taught my brothers this too. And I'm telling you, I have what this this topic right now, and what you just said about calling things out and pointing things out that are uncomfortable or having those conversations. He said. Jennifer, if you always tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. And and so again, he, he in the context he was saying it is how you show up. But two, if you show up and you are and you're doing that in a room, no matter who's in there, and then you're doing it in another room, and you're doing it in another room, and you're doing it in another place, like you don't have to go. Oh, shit, I said that over there, but like that's not really. I was I was saying it because of who was in the room. So now I'm in this room and here's who's in the room. This, okay, I got to make sure that I like, I don't want to, you know, like it, it, your brain has to think about all those things. But if you just go in, sometimes again, it's going to be stinky. It's going to be uncomfortable. They may not invite you back to the room. Like you have to own that. But also they also know if they are inviting you, you're going to be honest. You're going to say the things that are real. And you're also bringing in great perspective. Like, and so, you know, where's the balance there? I just know that, everyone that I engage with knows they're going to get the real me and I'm going to be honest and I'm going to tell them what I think. They may not invite me back. And I, yes. I have accepted that and that's okay. <laughs> oh man. So there's two points that I'm going to, we got some freaking awesome comments. Okay. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you tribe. Dr. G says conflict avoidance is conflict multiplier. Spot on, right? Look, just, just go embrace the conflict. It's going to be fine. Kyle, where is he? I found, I saw him here. He's killing it today. <laughs> Kyle is killing it. He says, when you first light a fire, the fire will be, burn wild. Over time, the fire settles, settles in, embers are formed that hold the energy, add more fuel, and the embers will light that nest log and feel, feel the fire burning. It's all about growth and knowing who you are. So let's, I want to, I want to dive into that, right? When you first light a fire and that fire burning wild. Um, what was that like for you, Jen? Like when you caught fire and like, it's, oh, we got to do, <laughs> was it like that at all? Yeah. And it was, of course it was. Cause I, I feel like every time I light fires, it's like that, but it's, it's a little overwhelming. It's that you're attracting certain things that you're like, Ooh, this feels good. And you got people that are like, yeah, that, but also you are, there are places that you have, like if you have, if you, and again, we've seen it in the news and Hawaii and all that, when the, when the fire is going wild, like you can't contain that. You can't just go turn off, turn on, turn off, turn on. Like you don't have the control as you're trying to figure, temper that and figure it out. Like, where am I going? What does it look like? And I, I I've learned when I felt like I could control it is when it went sideways and it went off the rails is because I, you know, you open Pandora's box, you open something and it's going and it's, you're fueled and you're on fire. Every little thing that all of a sudden, oh, I got to adjust, I got to adjust, I got to adjust. It diminished any impact or influence I could have. And, and it didn't mean I just should let it just, you know, go wild or whatever. But like when it's in that mode, you kind of have to be aware of it and then realize what you can control. And for me, I, I, it was me trying to control it along with letting it burn. Those don't go together sometimes. <laughs> and so what can I control? And then what, you know, what is the impact and influence that's having and who's getting drawn in and who's getting repelled? And I'm going to say repelled because that, yes, that is exactly what happens, <laughs> but also like, okay, just like, just like Kyle said, like this big flame and it's kind of wild. And then you start seeing, okay, it's starting to do this. And, the, and what does that look like? And leaning into that instead of let's just dump something on this because it's just too much. Like, yes, I, that, I, yes I've experienced all of that. Well, and I, I think the key takeaway there is 
the way we handle it elicits a response. Yes. Like, first of all, if my fire is, is brighter than everybody around me, it's going to elicit a response because they see me doing all kinds of crazy things that don't seem to make any kind of sense. And it also shows them like, man, I'm not doing anything. Right. I'm still talking about the same damn stories from 10 years ago. Yes. Right. And, and so that's a reality. Right. And that's that's healthy. I think mm -hmm. they can stay there or they can they can jump on board like let's go. Let's go forward. Um, and the other side of it is like when my fire lit, I didn't know how to handle it. Like, 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 let's just go, bro. let's burn everything down, right? So Denise, another one, she says, sometimes we don't even realize we are dimming to succeed. Once our internal voice starts screaming, our emotional intelligence begins to grow and the shift begins. It can take some time and giving yourself grace to grow. Yes. Like that. Well, I love that. Yes, I love that. And you've had, you had, I had asked you a question the last couple of weeks because I've had a lot of crap going on. Not crap like bad, but like a lot of light shining on me, which is not a normal place for me. I love shining and, and elevating people. And the last couple of weeks have been very much me owning the impact I'm having. And I, my question to you, what <laughs> so much love today. Um, but my question to you was, can you own your impact and be out there owning it and still not realize the, the, the brightness that you are creating? And that like, that's been not, it's, it's this, it's not even grappling. It's, it's that, can you be out there do like owning it, but not even knowing, I'm telling you, I'm getting comments today and I'm just like, these people, like, where did, are, these, are these people living the same life I'm living? But it's, but like uh, understanding how bright your light is, like yeah. we don't lean into that. Yeah. Yeah. And I, it was a simple answer. My answer was like, hell yes. Right. And so maybe to, to add some context for the tribe, you know, taking, owning your impact, right recognizing and owning saying this is the way i serve this is the way i influence people that's uncomfortable there's a lot of internal work that i had mm -hmm. to do to get to the point where i was like yes this is how i best serve this is the impact i have this is the value i deliver mm -hmm. i do it consistently and this is how i do it it felt really braggy for me to do that uh and and over time i've been i'm getting more and more comfortable with it yes and so the question is like, okay, is it possible to take ownership for all my awesomeness while also being unaware of some peripheral awesomeness that I think I'm seeing, yeah. but am I delusional? Like, is that, <laughs> am, I, am I really taking my ownership of my impact? Da, 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 da. Yes. And so my, my answer was like, absolutely yes. Right. Because there are second, third order consequences. And when I say consequence in the normal state um, to the way we serve and contribute to people's lives. And so I am fully aware of the way I impact people when I, because of my vulnerability, right? Mm -hmm. I can say that today. <laughs> Two years ago, people were telling me like, man, your vulnerability is amazing. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? Well, I'm not vulnerable. It, so I had to come to terms with that. Now, there were other things that were happening, inspiring people to take action and make life changing decisions because I was embracing my vulnerability. But I didn't know that this was causing these other things. I could see it happening. And I'm like, how is that happening? Is it related? Is it not related? And so think about I mean, maybe another easier frame to think or look at it through is you're hugely impactful. You played a huge role within your organization. And then we start sharing what you've learned and what you've done, what you've accomplished, what other people have started. Da, 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 da. And it's easy to think only through the framework of the organization. Oh, yes. But as those things you start sharing publicly, you start influencing other organizations. You start influencing an industry to say, what the hell is that over there? We need some of that. How did you do it? How are blah, blah, like all of that. And so it's like, I know I have some, I know I have huge impact in this circle, in this little lake, 
holy hell, I didn't realize that I was having impact in these in the ocean. Yes. Um, and so I think that's a natural thing. I, honestly, I, and this may be short sighted, but I think if you believe you're impacting everything everywhere all the time, you got another problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That, that's a different issue. <laughs> and, and everybody's been, showing up for you. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. And so. Uh, and I think that the, the important thing there is we all have that dynamic happening, right? Our words impact and influence people, the people that we're targeting and the people that are around. And so that can go in a positive way or a negative way. And we have to be aware of the fact that the impact and the influence we have on others is far broader than we are aware of. And so if we just, what I've done is I assume that I'm going to be impacting people that I've never met, seen, or heard from. And so when I know that, or I've, when I've decided that that is a truth, I'm more responsible in my language and in my messaging and more intentional in my language and in my messaging, because it can and will have impact beyond the people that I'm aware of. Yes, Jesse. So yes, 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 yes. And the intentional part is, if I'm coming into a room and I'm going to make him understand and see it or her understand and see it, then I'm losing sight of what the goal is. But if yes. I show up and I am creating an environment where everyone in the room is starting to understand and see this and Maria, Maria had Maria Martin said um, in a previous um, after party, she says, there are times where when that light is bright and that, and that, that person is shining. She goes, for me, sometimes it's like warmth and I, I'm drawn to it because it, it makes me feel like safe and comfortable. That's not what we're talking. Like we've not talked about that perspective on the people that we do draw in mm -hmm. and those people that do like, and again, there's a lot of them over there in the, in the, in the, in the chat, but those people that this is something that makes me feel better. That makes me feel like validated. And there's something going on that I'm doing that there are other people that feel this way. And I think that's another perspective is that when we go in with the intent of I am going to share all of my wonderfulness to you, Jesse, and I'm going to make sure you understand. And when you leave here, you're going to think different. I think there are people that walk into rooms like that and they may make their point or they may not. But if that is not your goal, if your goal is to create the right environment, and impact one person. And if one person can leave and make a different choice or make a different decision based on something they heard or they said, or that, you know, something that was ha happened in that room, that's that ripple. That's the ripples of impact that we don't know maybe what will happen from that. But that that has been a lot of our approach. And because of that, it has drawn more people in. Yes, 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 yes. And so hashtag peripheral awesomeness uh, Denise liked that one. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to go to some vulnerability. Yes. Here. Adam says, I feel like my health has dimmed my light over the last year. And he's excited to reignite that light hashtag reignite that light. And I'm going to contradict that statement. We all have health. It is our response to the state of our health <laughs> that is tweaking and adjusting the light, right? I mean, we, we've probably seen memes or YouTube videos of people that um, have less agency due to disformities, et cetera, and their attitude is inspiring. Uh, so I, I will say it is indeed how we respond to that. Like, we all, everybody has a bad problem and their problem is the worst damn problem that they have, period. Mm -hmm. In my world, that's the worst thing. Compared to other people, it may, it's pretty damn awesome. So how do I respond to it is the difference, mm -hmm. right? And, and so back to this control idea, you already know how I feel about control. I do get to choose how I respond to things. Mm -hmm. And so back to the main point. My light, my fire, I get to choose what temperature that's going to be all the time. I am always choosing. It's not because of X, Y, or Z. 
If somebody says, man, Jesse, you talk a bunch of shit and everything's perfect for you. You got everything so easy. That's why you're the way you are. I get to say, oh, I appreciate your perspective and keep burning. <laughs> right. I don't have to turn it down because mm -hmm. I've offended because my confidence offends somebody's insecurities. Mm -hmm. I can keep rolling. Um, that being said, we do have life situations <clears throat> that make it easy for us to step back and hide and sink and shrink. Mm -hmm. I know the only answer for me to get beyond that is to tap into my people. Right. And voice it. So applause to Adam for voicing that. Yeah. Uh, but you got a choice, baby. You got a choice. Right. Because here's the other beautiful, magical thing back to like the peripheral awesomeness. In our worst situation, when I'm handling it in such a way, looking at it like, OK, I'm in a dark time right now. What can I learn and how can I share my learnings with others? I'm giving hope and inspiration to other people that are in the exact situation that don't have people around them to lift them up and see their peripheral awesomeness. What it's the think? share part. Well, it's the share part. You just, I mean, it, everything you just said, it comes back to the share part. And we noticed that a year and a half ago, almost two years ago, what, what this platform is doing. And it is giving a space for people to just put words to something and put a voice to something and to share something again, personal, you know, or conflicting or controversial. It doesn't even matter because it's now a space for people to feel um, that they can like, and there's a quote, there's one with Demetria that she, again, she is killing it. She's all over the place. She's one of my really good friends and she has led so much amazing change in our market here. And, you know, and she's like, she's had this exact experience a few weeks ago with a national conference that she like really led. And it's like, th there's not a platform for her to, her to go and say, I have experienced that. Like, there's not a place for that. And that doesn't mean we're the answer to everything, but it is a place for people that are out there changing the dang world to go. I feel that I've experienced that. And we don't have to go, Demetri, I have the answer. I have the solution. Let me tell you how you can work. The, like that is not our, that's not, it's a place to where there's other people that feel the exact same way and have experienced these things. And you are not alone. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh, like Carol says, not why me, what am I learning? hundred percent. That's transformed my life because I was in a why me state for a very long time. And guess what? I didn't serve anybody. Uh, what am I learning? Guess what? I can serve others. Uh, Bruce, man, we got some good stuff. Bruce says, following up on Jess, regardless of the, this is an interesting one. Regardless of the degree of your passion, are you aware of the potential for the manipulation of that passion, potentially counter to your intention? I certainly believe so. And so, yes, Bruce. And I, I had a, a very specific lesson that helped me understand that early on. I was a plum informant. I had just been promoted to plum and foreman. It was with the company that I had been with less than a year. And they had this um, quarterly breakfast with the CEO thing, which was awesome. Um, amazing organization. And the, our business unit was in a bad way. Like it was corrupt. I'll just leave it at that. And I was the rookie hotshot new foreman, new to the company. And there were the older, I wouldn't say older, but the more experienced, more established foreman within the organization. And I could not like back to wire fire burning wildly. That was me. And if there was a problem and I saw something that didn't align with the published values and mission statement, all that garbage, I would point it out like, we talk about servant leadership. That's this person is doing X, Y, and Z. How is that servant leadership? How do they get promoted? How do they grow within the organization? If the organ like, and, and I was like vigilant, of course, people got sick and tired of hearing that, but we have this, this, this quarterly breakfast coming up and all the, the old heads were like, Hey, like we got together, like, Hey, Jess, we need to bring up this and we need to bring this up and we need to bring this up and we need to bring this up. Like, yeah, I agree. Like I, yeah, this is, this is what they need to know. They don't clearly, they don't know about it. What they were saying is Jesse, you need to bring it up. <laughs> because right? you're, just, you're just expendable. <laughs> yes. yes. And so was I being manipulated a hundred percent? 
And so I, and in the moment I felt important, right? Because yes. yes. I went home that evening. I said, wait a minute. These jellyfish, like they've been here a long time. They've contributed to this environment. And they want me to put my head on the chopping block because they have nothing to risk. They get to say like, oh, no, everything's great. So you know what? I'm only going to talk about the things that I feel that are important, that I've, I, I've experienced directly, that I care about. Okay. We go to the breakfast and, you know, we do the thing, the song and dance. And finally he says, okay, it's, like, it's only like 10 of us. There's not a whole bunch of us. CEO says, what's bothering you? What do we need to work on? And so they go around the table and those old heads are like, oh, nothing. It's great. This is a great place to work. I love the bed. And I'm like, you freaking weenies. Like nothing. Everything was great. The night before, oh, my God, this company's going to fail. They're not treating her. <laughs> and so then I said my thing. I said, look, there's people at this table that have problems and they're not going to share them. I'm not here to represent them. I'm here to represent myself and my team. And things are the things that I think need attention. What did, what did I lose? Those guys didn't like me anymore, right? Like I was not part of the cool crowd anymore. And it was a few years before I became the cool crowd. Um, and there was a lot of friction. I got, there was a lot of stuff, the retaliation that, you know, subliminal, like whatever that, that I had to work through. But I think it's an important thing, Bruce, that you mentioned that, and, and kind of connects to people getting, yeah, don't be a jellyfish. Hashtag people coming to the warmth. They want to hide behind your flame. Ooh, so you that, the yes. Flames, right? Like that's not okay either. Right? Like if you got, here's the deal. You, you just need them. And you know this. Adam knows. Everybody knows this. You ain't going to hide behind my flame. Like you're going to be on stage two. Mm-hmm. Period. And if you're not prepared to be on stage, you need to step back and let somebody else take your spot. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to introduce people to the promise they are intended to be. And if you ain't ready, ready to step up, you get a backseat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> people that are ready to take action and make significant change and examine their thinking and their contribution to the omniverse, they get a front seat. It's mm -hmm. that simple. You don't get to hide. <laughs> not with me. What do you think, Jen? Well, uh, yes, and I, that's, I think I've experienced a lot of that. Not that I wanted to hide. And I. it was even not, I don't even think intentionally, you just sometimes get in that, you're just going through your routine. You're going through your things and you're, it, you're making a decision to just stay where you are. And it doesn't mean I don't want to do all these other things. And I'm telling you, colliding, our lives colliding. <laughs> and that's what I call them, collision. But I think it it helped jar me a little bit to go, I'm doing these other things, but I'm doing them in such this small space. And, and it was impactful and it was influencing. And I think our conversations helped me see that that was on me. That was on me. I was, I was, in, I was doing it and I was keeping it small, whether it was to control it, whether it was because I was scared of what would happen, that was on me. I couldn't blame anybody else for that. I couldn't put that off on anybody else. And I had to make a decision. One, if I wanted to continue to hang out with you, I wasn't going to be able to stay small. But well, that's on, that's another show. But it was, I had to make a decision on if I believe in these things and I'm doing them here and I see what it could be, then I have to be willing to take that jump. And that was a decision I had to make. And, and again, I, I made it and I believed in it and I wasn't, I knew that it was going to do great things. And I, I didn't, I couldn't even predict what, what, it, what, where we would be right now. <laughs> yes. Love it. So question for people to like chew on between now and the next is what spice do you? Yes. Want, so right? that, yes. That I, and so you talked about spice early. And that's my, that's, so I want people to think about this because I, I feel like Jesse, you're like the, you're like the jalapeno and I'm not trying to be, you know, trying to just because, but you're like the jalapeno. There are people that love jalapenos and that want them loaded up on their nachos. They want them on every freaking thing they eat. And that spicy, whatever that is, that's like my face is about to explode. And then there's people that are like, I'm not a spice person. 
I'm not a spicy. I don't like the flat. I don't like the heat and all that. It reminded me of your story at the beginning on there's people that like my flavor and there's people that are probably not going to be. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. And so it may, that's what that question made me really think about. And I want people to think about like, what is, what spice do you bring? Is it the sweet? Is it the salty? Is it the sour? Is it the, is it the mixture of, you know, what are those things? Because every one of you, if you think about it, you know, like I'm the salty and I feel like Sarah is a little salty. Like she likes to kind of, you know, bring it up, get a little, get some things mixed up in there. But like everyone has that spice and it could be sugar. Like, again, it could be anything, but what is <laughs> Bruce turmeric? What is that <laughs> spice you bring? And like, I love this conversation because like there's some that are, you can do both. You can do the sweet, like whatever that is, but that is like, that can help you a little bit go, this is, this is kind of the stuff I bring. And that's why that person may not be liking it so much. So, yes. And it's okay that they don't. And I I'll, I'll add, we all have a spice. We all have a flavor. Are we all aware of it? Right. That's the purpose of the question. You know, the other thing I love about the tribe is, you know, folks, if you're out there watching it and you're not paying it, like if you're watching the replay and you haven't paid attention to the chat, you should, because <laughs> We have, there's two that I want to share right now, right before we close yes, yes, yes. that, that you like that thinking is fabulous. It, it'll it help you. So we had a lot of experience coming in. Alan, my buddy, Alan says, Alan, Alan, Alan. yes, <laughs> Alan says your vibe attracts your tribe. He's learning that when people show you that you're not needed and it's for reasons outside of your control, that's okay. Uh, what helps him discern when the double down and when to stay in my lane is answering the question. Am I running away from my discomfort or am I running towards a clear goal? That's a perfect reflection question. Yes. Not all obstacles are potholes in the road. Speed bumps tend to be installed for a reason. Gangsta. And, you know, on the same thread of thinking, the chief marketeer says, Never think dim in your flame is best. Learning to control and shape your flame is better. Death of a friend's loved one, be a candle. Hanging with friends over the weekend, be a campfire. Playing with the grandkids, be a raging forest fire. We, oh, is that yes, like, yes. yes, it just speaking to my heart. <laughs> yes. Um, so we got three minutes left. Oh, damn. Jen, I'm going to need you to carry the torch for a little bit so I can post the damn uh, after party link and all this and all the stuff. OK, it is on our no BS page. Just so you know, and in the um, I think we've shared that, but he's going to put it on this thread just so you find it. But if you're on the call right now and you want to jump into the after party after we finish, you're going to struggle finding it here. So either click on it when Jesse shares it, or you can go to the No BS with Jen and Jess page on LinkedIn, and it is actually an event that is shared there that you can just click and join. So I don't think we've shared that before, and I think people sometimes struggle finding the link. So the after party is, uh, if you have not done it before, all it is is a click and you join. And Jesse and I get to carry the load a lot when we're talking on this uh, on the live stream. The after party is us kind of taking a back seat and listening and giving you the, the stage to be able to share any comments, thoughts, anything that you've thought about during the live stream that maybe you didn't get to voice or you get you want to speak and be able to kind of share that with a group of people on here's my takeaways. Most of the time, I'm not going to say 100% of the time, but most of the time, the next show stems from the conversations in the after party. <laughs> so because of things that have that spurred and sparks and stuff, those conversations, Jesse and I have a kind of a debrief and we literally to figure out what we're going to talk about in two weeks. So please jump on if you haven't, even if you want to come in and just listen, you don't have to get on the stage, but we want to make sure that um, everyone has the opportunity to do that. So. Yes. I'm trying to post it in the Facebook, but it's not letting me. Oh, well, we'll figure it out. Okay, we're um, almost at final thoughts. So how about I do my final thoughts? I love, Adam, thank you. Keep them coming. People love the contribution. Sarah, it was not a bad call out. It was, a, I love you and your saltiness, but you're also sweet sometimes too. So just so you know, your saltiness is what definitely makes me love you. <laughs> thank you. Sarah. Yes. Awesome. Steel is only sharpened by steel, Miss Carol. And, and so 
like full disclosure, Carol, I don't know if you were here at the very beginning, but we are blaming you. You are guilty and responsible for this conversation. Yes. Thank you for, for bringing your fire like you always do. Jafar says, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think this was, uh, hopefully it was a coherent conversation. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we, we sometimes think it and then we go back and go, what were we talking about? Yep, yep. Folks, I love the advice that y'all brought. There you go. Dr. G saying such a great dialogue this morning. Um, in my head, it's this, like you have a flame, figure out what that spice is. Know that if people are repulsed by it, that's more them than you. Um, and you can throttle it back, but don't lose it. We need it, right? You're an expert at being you and you're the only you. So be as much of you as you can be. And let's just continue forward. Yes. Good. Yes. And just, again, own what you have. Don't diminish who you are. Make sure that, uh, and again, like, don't blame others if you're making a decision because you're trying to conform. Like, stop and reflect and think about why are you choosing that? And that, going back to what Steve said, like, just think about why you're making that decision. Yes. And you got to listen to Jen because she's a really big deal. All right. Five minutes. We will be on the after party. See y'all later. Peace.